All right, guys, so this is the last problem in our series. Uh, it's very similar to a Gauss's law problem. Um, we are dealing with a lossy dielectric. Uh, a dielectric is a medium where charges don't move in the medium, but they're polarized. A conductor, charges actually move in the conductor. Um, but a lossy dielectric, like a poor conductor and not a great dielectric, so it's a partially conducting medium, so it's somewhere in the middle. What that means here, so we have this function for charge density, it's for volume charge density, and P0 is our initial charge density, and it's uh, this charge is dissipating or decaying kind of with an exponential function that's based on time. So we need to use that in our equation. So we're gonna use Gauss's law uh, here, and what we're gonna do uh, when we solve this out, it's gonna, we're gonna have an E field multiplied by a surface that's gonna be equal to the volumetric charge enclosed over epsilon, and then we're just going to divide by the surface. So get the surface on this side and then divide this side by the surface to find our E. So for the radius inside, for Gauss's law, uh, we need to solve this equation twice. We're going to solve it once for the uh, to find a function with this radius, and this radius is any radius from 0 to B. So we're going to solve it once to get a function from 0 to B to find an E field if we plug in any radius from zero to B. And then we're going to find a second function by solving this again, but with a different dielectric constant because we're um, dealing with air. So E naught is outside of the sphere. So we're solving it again, but with E naught in the denominator because we're outside of the sphere. Um, and then for all of the charge in this uh, black sphere, uh, it'll be in included in the Q enclosed part of our solution. Um, okay. so. To reiterate, we're using Gauss's law, finding the E field on the inside, finding the E field on the outside by solving this twice. Uh, and then once we get that, we can solve part B and part B is asking us for the E field on, or for the current density on the inside. And so we can just use this equation and take our E field that we find from the inside to solve for B. Okay, so let's start with A. So we want a function uh, where we can plug in any radius from zero to B and it's gonna spit out our electric field. Okay, so what we need to do is solve for a couple of things here. Uh, so when we have, um, so the differential surface that we want, uh, it's a sphere. So we want a differential surface with a the r hat vector normal to it. So we're going to just take uh, dsr, which is going to be a normal, um, when we integrate it, will give us just the surface area of the sphere. So we're going to end up with a radial E field. Okay, uh, so er, and then by uh, multiply by the integral of dsr. Okay, and the radius for this uh, ds for this surface is going to be our Gaussian radius. Uh, all right, and then so that's for the left side, always the Gaussian radius on the left. And then for q enclosed, um, we're going to solve for that separately. So we'll put queen kills over e naught. Then we're going to use this expression here. Because we have a volume charge, we have to integrate over the volume to get the total charge. Okay, um, all right, so one weird thing when we're on the inside. Uh, for our enclosed charge, it always means the charge enclosed in the Gaussian surface. So if we're like all the way out here, it would be the whole circle, but because we're inside of it, the charge enclosed is only going to be part of it, right? Because it's the, it's enclosed based on the radius. So the radius for our charge enclosed is going to be the same as the Gaussian radius. Okay. So it's going to be the same. So when we look at the volume, we're using uh, the Gaussian radius, okay? So Q enclosed, and then we're gonna plug in our function for PV that we have from over here, right? We're using this because we have a um, lossy dielectric for this problem. So uh, I'm gonna plug that guy in for PV. So our Q enclosed is gonna equal this integral, okay? And then times DV, and our radius for DV is the same. The Gaussian radius. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, enclosed uh, is equal to, and uh, we can pull out all of this, E naught negative sigma over epsilon, and the radius for that volume is going to be the Gaussian radius, just because we talked about this. All right, by we're going to just say that we integrated and we have the volume, okay? Because I want to make this look a little simpler as we're doing it. Okay, for this guy, uh, ER, and then we're gonna say that we integrate it and that we have the surface. So this is the Gaussian surface, uh, and it's equal to our Q enclosed. So let's go ahead and copy that over. So we found Q enclosed, right? Put that over here, 
and then we're going to divide our two and close by. Okay, cool. So our problem here, we are trying to solve uh, for the electric field. So to solve for the electric field, we are basically just going to divide by our um, Gaussian surface area of the sphere. So what is S and what is V, right? Well, we have a sphere. So we're just going to take the spherical surface area, right, and the spherical volume, but we're going to plug in our Gaussian uh, radiuses here. Okay, so it's going to be uh, equal to P naught E to negative P naught over E equal to T. So it's just a lot to write. Uh, and then our volume, so volume for a sphere, right, it's 4 thirds pi. And then our R is that Gaussian R still, right? And I'm just drawing it as a different color. Obviously, you guys don't need to do this. I think it's just easier, hopefully, for you guys to follow what I'm doing um, when I'm, because there are different R's in this problem. Uh, okay, and then four pi r squared is the surface area for a sphere. So four pi and then r squared for a Gaussian r. Okay, so these r's are the same, right? This r equals this r. Sometimes that's not always the case for Gauss, right? Sometimes the r's are different um, when you get to the end of your problem. So you might want to label them differently. Um, but, okay, so we're going to uh, simplify here. For 3e here. And E is equal to 1.2 E naught. And you can look up E naught. This is actually a, a constant. This is a value here. Um, and so we have almost everything that we need here, but we also, we need this P naught value. Okay. Um, and you can actually solve for this P naught value right away if you want to here for the problem. Uh, to solve for P naught, we're going to have to use the Q enclosed equation. And I'm going to just solve for it up here because I think we're going to need it for other parts of the problem. I probably should have done that first. I think it maybe would have been a little more straightforward, but okay. Okay, so we're given an initial charge by the problem, right? They give us uh, one millicoulomb right here, okay? So we're gonna say Q naught is equal to the integral, right, of um, P naught. So we're trying to find our initial charge density based on our initial charge, and then times dV, okay? Uh, and for this guy, for our initial charge, we want the full circle, right? So we're looking for the full circle. I labeled the radius of the whole circle as B, and the problem actually gives it to us. The radius is this guy. So we can we can plug in all of our values when we um, are at this point. So Q naught over 4 thirds pi r cubed equals P naught. Uh, and we have Q. So like this is Q right here. So Q naught equals one millicoulomb radius for the full circle. So this is B. Well, I'll, I'll label this as B because maybe it'll, we have a lot of different radiuses in this problem, right? Uh, and this is how we find our, our P naught here. So we just are gonna plug those in. So we're gonna plug in P naught and then our B is equal to, what was it for the radius? Uh, 0 0.1 meters. Uh, and then if we solve this out, the value that we get for P naught for this problem, I think it's 0 0.239. Uh, equals 0 0.239, okay? So we do have that one, so just kind of point, pointing to how uh, we would find that. So we do have P naught, um, and so this equation for E field that we have here, we have all of the terms here. So we have P naught, so we have P naught, we have um, the problem gives us conductivity that we can plug in, the problem gives us our epsilon that we can plug in, um, and we're leaving time because we want it as a function of time. So we're going to solve for everything. Um, and then our final answer for this, uh, so we're leaving the R in the equation now. So our final answer is going to turn into the R equals um, R times uh, 7.5 times 10 to the 9th, uh, E to the negative 9.42 times 10 to the 11th uh, T volts per meter. So I think it's more important that you symbolically get everything right. If you plug in your numbers funky at the end, so be it. Um, that won't be like points wise, that's not super crazy. It's more important that your process is correct when you're solving this. So I would recommend trying to solve it out symbolically first instead of plugging in numbers and maybe getting yourself a little lost there. Okay, so we found our E field. Uh, for the inner part, right? So we have this guy. Okay, so now we need to find our E field for R larger than B. Okay, so some theoretical R that's larger than the radius of the sphere, 
and um, we're enclosing all of the charge in this case. Okay, so same approach. Um, so we have a radial E field for a sphere and then integral of ds r um, for a sphere. You can look, the, if you forget what this is, you could look it up and then integrate over the bounds if you wanted to, it would give you the same answer. Um, I'm just trying to skip some steps here. So our Q enclosed is actually gonna be our Q naught for this one, right? Um, so we just have the whole Q naught for this guy and our epsilon is going to be E naught uh, for this. So let's change this because we're in air. So Q naught over epsilon naught uh, times our um, surface. So this is the Gaussian surface, Gaussian R, right? Because this is always the DS on the Gauss side, on the left side is always Gaussian R. Um, so then we have Q naught over E naught. Uh, and then we're going to uh, let's go over here and then we can go ahead and divide by so er is equal to s times q naught over e naught okay so er equals 4 pi and it's uh, r squared um, and then over e naught okay so you can plug in we have all of these guys here right we have q naught equals one millicoulomb, right? And then we have um, our E naught is just a constant, so that guy's just a constant. You can look that one up. So we're gonna plug in our values here, uh, and we're gonna end up with nine times 10 to the sixth uh, times one over R squared, okay? So that's gonna be our radius for the outer part, okay? So for radius for B is larger than R, and then this guy, our internal one was obviously more complicated. This is the expression here for the internal one before we plug in all this stuff. Okay, so recapping what we just did for this problem. Um, we used Gauss's law to find the E field um, inside of the radius, and then we used Gauss's law to find the E field outside of the radius. For the inside, what we had to do was we had to use the uh, dielectric constant for Gauss's law when we solved for it. We also needed to use this function for a lossy dielectric inside of the sphere, okay? Uh, and we did some fun, fancy math here, and we um, also noted that the, the radius for the volume for Q enclosed had to equal the Gaussian radius because it was smaller than the full circle. So the enclosed Gaussian surface would um, also have the, the same radius for that volume. So the charge enclosed has to be enclosed by the Gaussian radius. Okay, so simplified and solved, and we got this expression here. Uh, feel free to plug in and try the math on your own. Um, we are given, yeah, we've got conductivity up there. Okay, and then for this guy, for the outer part, uh, the difference for this was we needed to use uh, E naught in the denominator because we are uh, no longer inside of the dielectric. The total charge enclosed, we used Q naught for this part, and then we solved that for this. Okay, and then finally, what we're gonna do uh, is just do that last part for part B. Um, and our sigma here uh, is conductivity, and it's 10, I think, what's the unit? Siemens per something? Siemens per meter? 10 Siemens per meter. So our, our um, current density is just gonna be our E field equation above multiplied by 10. So it's just gonna be equal to, because it asks us for the E inside, right? So it's just gonna be this guy multiplied by 10. Um, and so it's going to, okay, say is equal to this. And then our units for multiplied by 10. So we're just gonna go up by a power of 10 basically. Uh, and then our units for this guy are amperes per meter cubed. Um, the last one separately here. Okay, so there we go. So that is our full problem here. So this is a little tricky. If you are comfortable with the Gauss's Law problems or you looked at some of those, you'll note that this approach is super similar to Gauss's Law, just with some weird tweaks. Um, so if you don't feel super comfortable with messing around with Gauss's law, I would maybe look at um, those problems separately. Um, yeah, and then, oh, one more thing to remember too before we got started, we also needed to look at how to find our Q naught value so that we could, or find our P naught value so that we could plug it in for our expression below when we solved.
Okay.